At the high point in his acting career, between Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and The Sting, Paul Newman starred in John Huston's The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean. This 1972 American Western is loosely based on the real-life hanging judge, Roy Bean. He was the self-proclaimed law west of the Pecos. A saloon owner full of adventure, Bean's claim to fame rested on his sometimes amusing and oftentimes curious rulings, which he handed down as a justice of the peace in western Texas during the latter decades of the 19th century. The film's original script, filled with unique characters, dramatic and fast-paced events, and both humorous and somber moments, was written by the renowned screenwriter John Milius. At that time, he was still riding high on the remarkable acclaim that he was receiving from his Jeremiah Johnson screenplay. Milius had hoped that Judge Roy Bean would lead to his directorial debut with the actor Warren Oates in the title role. He envisioned the film being made rather inexpensively, He wanted to shoot it in Spain in some run-down little town that was a leftover from one of Sergio Leone's films. He shopped the script around studios for $150,000 with the understanding that he would direct it, but he found no takers in this venture. It was finally purchased by First Artist for $300,000, which was extremely high for a script back then. But producer John Foreman wanted somebody else with experience to direct it. So John Houston of the Maltese Falcon and the African Queen got the job. Together, Milius and Houston created a very entertaining movie. Much like the script, the film was very fast-paced. The action scenes were strikingly dramatic. And mixed in with all of this was a sufficient amount of well-paced, tension-relieving, amusing breaks. Their lead actor did a stellar job in his performance. Milius would later say that he liked John Huston as a person, but he thought that he completely ruined the movie by casting Paul Newman in the role. He called him a cutesy pie and felt like that he didn't fit the role. He honestly thought that Warren Oates would have made a more suitable candidate for this role. He even told the Los Angeles Times at the time that Judge Roy Bean had been turned into a Beverly Hills Western. He also claimed that this experience drove him into directing, out of self-defense and desire for control of the project. Paul Newman has stated that this was one of his favorite roles. And when you watch the movie, you really can kind of understand why. He probably had fun doing this. The shooting location for the film was about a 90-minute drive outside of Tucson, and director John Huston lived on this location for the entire duration of the shoot. He later stated that he was the only person that did this except for the watchman that lived there too. All the other cast members and crew went back to town, but he just stayed there in his trailer. He says that he stayed in many locations and often wondered why everyone takes fatiguing, back-breaking journeys backwards and forwards, day after day, sometimes an hour's journey over rough roads. He just thought, as comfortable as these trailers are that were provided for him, why not stay on the set? Now, John Milius and John Houston had a very strange relationship. It said that John Huston would explain everything that he was doing to John Milius at the time. Milius felt like he was constantly being tortured by Huston. He would change the things that he was doing in the scenes that Milius thought were deliberately wrong. But at the same time, he would explain his options and why he had made that decision, right or wrong. Milius watched the atmosphere that he created on the set and watched the way that he dealt with actors that were resisting him. Now, a point of trivia in this movie, in the credits, you'll notice that Jacqueline Bissett's name is misspelled. It makes one wonder if this was done intentionally or just by an error. And the reason I state that 
is that my friend Jennifer O'Neill had the same thing happen to her when she did Rio Lobo. Howard Hawks got really mad at her because she wouldn't sign a multi-picture deal with him. And so he got back at her. He misspelled her name in the credits. And she told me that she knew it was done intentionally. So it would really be interesting to know if Jacqueline Bissett's name was intentionally done like that. Now at one point while driving through Dublin in the early 1990s, Paul Newman asked his driver to stop because he had just passed a restaurant called Judge Roy Beans. He told his driver that he had to go in and see what it was like. This was around 6 o'clock in the evening, and all the patrons were just tickled to death and surprised to have this Hollywood veteran come into their bar. He pointed at the quad poster framed on the wall in the bar and told everyone that he had played Judge Roy Beans. When the barman told him that the next time he was in town, he should call into the nightclub above, which was called Lily's Bordello, Newman immediately pointed to the image of Ava Gardner on the poster and shouted, And she played Lily. This was a great experience for all these town folks at their local pub. Now, throughout this entire movie, the character of Lily Langtree interjects itself through almost every minute of the film. This character is played by Ava Gardner, but it's interesting to note that although her image is seen throughout the movie and her character talked about constantly, she doesn't actually appear in the movie until about 15 minutes before the film ends. I myself have always been an Ava Gardner fan, and in her day, she was probably one of the best-looking actresses ever to grace the screens of Hollywood. Now, Watch Bear plays a real prominent role in this film, and he was played by a North American black bear named Bruno. He was best known for playing the lead role in the CBS television series Gentle Ben from 1967 to 1969. His bear character in the film was a loose version of a real pet black bear, also named Bruno, that the real-life Judge Roy Bean kept during the days while he was serving as a Justice of the Peace in Langtree, Texas. At the time of the film, Bruno's very best friend was an African male lion called Neil. Trainer Roy Oxley often found it calming for the two friends to travel together to a location, even if only one had a part in the movie they were doing. On this occasion, when Bruno was working, director John Huston's wife Celeste would keep his friend Nell, the African lion, company and would entertain him by playing with him. Paul Newman kind of struggled with the thought of Bruno being in this role because he thought that Bruno stole every scene which they appeared together in. This was an opinion also shared by some of the reviewers. Some of them said for the first time in a long and rewarding career, Paul Newman has emerged from a film as second best. Jacqueline Bissett is an extraordinary addition to the film in her role as Roy Bean's daughter, Rose. The part of the Mexican girl, Maria Elena, is portrayed by newcomer Victoria Principal. This was actually her big screen debut, and she didn't disappoint. She delivers a stellar performance, and she was rewarded with a nomination for a Golden Globe in her supporting role. Now, this original script was sent to Lee Marvin, who was making the movie Pocket Money at the time. Marvin ended up falling asleep after drinking way too much, which he always did. And that's one thing you got to love about this guy. Every movie that he's on, there's some kind of entertainment that's provided by his drinking shenanigans. But he fell asleep and never read the script. His co-star in the movie, Paul Newman, found the screenplay and read it and just loved it. He went on to petition his agent for the part, and he ended up getting it. If you think about it, Lee Marvin would have made a great Judge Roy Bean. But he got a little bit sideways and quite a bit three sheets to the wind and missed out on a big opportunity. The Life and Times of Judge Roy Bean is a highly exaggerated account of the man's true life. 
John Huston even said so himself prior to the release of the movie. He said that this story is a complete departure from reality and is pure fantasy. But this being said, the film is fast-paced, entertaining, and intriguing. And these are the required ingredients that keep movie watchers returning for more and more of this classic film. Take a look at this movie. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.